today's topic is about ERC. If you have never heard of ERC, and this is a really good one to capture the spirit of the, the, the new law. And this is part of the tax refund would come to the employer. So as a person hiring people to work, and you uh, have the opportunity to be eligible for ERC and a claim ERC. Okay, and the good news is that you have a long time to do it. It's not a rush. You can do it within the five years time, three to five years time. So everyone will claim it. So uh, understand uh, what is that for you and claim it, that's the way to go. All right, so let's get going. And with our uh, today's webinar, I will share screen on a couple of key things. No responsibility disclaimer, knowledge here on the internet is so fluid. It's just because things are changing, especially during the pandemic time. And that, you know, president even changes every four years, never mind about policies, right? So they do change. And make sure that you get grab hold of the latest knowledge on the internet, verify that with your provider, and do not quote internet resources to do serious stuff out there that would not be good so that's why we put out no responsibility disclaimer because we don't want you to feel that you can 100 percent quote then do things we want you to quote remember and ask all right all right so let's talk about erc so this is, you know, those slides are really has gone through reviews and we worked on those slides. So if any of the slides are making you feel like you want to uh, read it carefully and take a screenshot while I am having that slides on, on, on the screen. So this is what a lot of people are doing. And I even have a client and this actually send a photo shot of our slide and with a, with a question. So that is more pointed to that slides. I have a question then we can answer it more appointed so we know that exactly where your question come from right so erc and is a uh, you can think of erc employee retention credit is a refundable tax credit okay there is a small noise about this thing there's a non-refundable portion i'll explain that later but just look at erc as money come back to you Okay, if you qualify, you do the calculation, you'll get a refund check. So how do you qualify? So basically in here, and it explains what can qualify. So 50% gross receipt drop in 2020. Um, let me take that back. So that 50% 2020 or 70% of 2021, that is to say is your qualified wages that you pay to employee. So think of the wages you pay to employee and those are the calculation basis. They want to calculate the refund based on that. So it's called the qualified wages. So in 2020, it was capped at $5,000 to say that you can't really get more than $5,000 per employee in 2020. But in 2021, that is capped at a 7,000 per employee. Listen carefully, but that's per quarter. So in 2020 is per year, but in 2021 is per quarter. Okay, that's where it comes a little bit confusing because some people are doing 2020 calculation thinking the 5,000 per employee is like 2021. No, the 5,000 maximum you are getting per employee is for that year. Okay, if we just go down to look at to look at the examples on the bottom. So above the example, we also mentioned to you that when you calculate the qualified wages and do not include the wages that has already been paid by PPP or your RRF, any other federal program that already covered your payroll expenses, pretend that payroll didn't happen. So that's not your qualified wages. For example, 10,000 qualified wages 
paid. You use that amount, paid amount, times 50%, that equals 5,000, right? So that 5,000 is refundable credit per employee in 2020 annual. So if you just have one employee, the most you get, it doesn't matter, you know, yes, you qualify and you can do it, but the most you got is 5,000. But 10,000 qualified wages paid, 70% of that 10,000, the 7,000 refundable credit in 2021 is per quarter. It's not per year. So this is, this is the big picture of uh, ERC. We just want you to remember. And 7,000 maximum credit you are getting back from the government, a check of 7,000, that comes every quarter. But the $5,000 check you get from the government, that is per year. Now, let's look at the period. So which are the period you could claim ERC? So the current law goes from March 12, 2020 to December 31st, 2020. That year, that is the 5,000 one I was talking about, the maximum credit capped at 5,000 per employee. From January the 1st, 2021 to September 30th, 2021, that is per quarter per employee for 7,000 maximum credit. We're talking about 7,000 refund check per employee per quarter in 2021 for the first three quarter. Now, there is a new thing just come up. I want you to know it's for recovery startup business. So what is recovery startup business? Businesses that got set up after February the 15th of 2020. So you, you, you are new. Pandemic happened, before pandemic happened and you just got your business started or during the pandemic time, you got your business started. You are the one qualified for recovery startup business. You are the recovery startup business qualified for ERC credit for the last two quarters, the third and the fourth quarters, all right? And so let's go look at in what case we could be eligible. I want to go down. This is a detailed slide. You see how I made it for 2020. This is how you qualify. Then for 2021, this is how you qualify. And then more in 2021, this is I talk about the recovery startup business. Okay, so, but I want to go through the next slide. It's the same slide, but I made it relatively simple. So you can kind of just, you know, understand that eligibility in a more straightforward. And without that detail, you can always snap a picture of this one. Okay, do it that way. Or you come back to here. So significant decline in quarterly gross receipts. 50% for 2020, 20% in 2021. So they are defining saying that your gross receipt is your total sales, right? The money you received in your cash register. And if your gross receipt declined 50%, 50% of what? 50% of the same quarter in 2019, okay? 20% in the same quarter of 20. Night compared to 2019. So whether it's 2020 quarters or 2021 quarters, they're all looking for 2019. Does that make sense? So that is one eligibility, significant gross receipt decline. Government orders that fully or partially suspend business operation. So what is partially? We have example here. The restaurant cannot sit customer anymore, only to carry out, right? So this is, or see if you didn't have significant decline, but you partially shut down, you know, this is or relationship, you don't have to have and. So make sure that you qualify for one of these, then you qualify. For the third quarter of 2021 only, the recovery startup business, so carry on business after February the 15th, 2020, and you gross sale less than a million. 
and your ERC, you qualify to claim ERC, but the claim is capped. The credit is capped at 50,000. One more thing about eligibility. Eligibility is really critical because if you work, if you work your payroll with a big payroll franchise company like ADP and, you know, um, what was the other ones? Pay, paycheck solutions, people like that, they have, they claim ERC credit for you as a service, but they have you sign a disclaimer saying that you have gone through the eligibility yourself and you knew you qualify. So they, they, they will take themselves out of the determining whether you qualify or not, folks. But eligibility is so important and you can't just assume you qualify. You really need that study, okay? So now let me talk about one more thing about this alternative quarter. It is a huge legal jargon paragraph and we have our attorneys here in the firm, our librarian doing research and the Dr. Howe and making his analytical process and coming up with a really simplified understanding for all of us. We're just, you know, regular business people. We're not trying to read, uh, read law books and uh, to become a lawyer, right? So I am not interested in that and I don't think you are, but we need someone to tell us in the layman term, we understand. So look at this, alternative quarter. If one quarter eligible, say quarter one, 2021, you eligible, your gross receipt was 20% less than quarter one, 2019 gross receipt. The next quarter is automatically eligible. What does that mean? So if I claimed quarter one, 2021 ERC, my quarter two, 2021 ERC is automatically eligible. The, in, in the immediately preceding quarter, that is the word they use for saying is eligible, immediately preceding quarter, but not to say that your third quarter. No, you claim the first quarter, so your second quarter is your immediately preceding quarter, right? Example, quarter one, 2021 qualified, then quarter two, 2021 is automatically qualified. Now, we had a three slides related to eligibility folks. So I'm coming back to the first slide because there's a lot of words in here, okay? For 2020, business operation fully or partially suspended by COVID related order or 50% compared to the same quarter in 2019 until after the quarter in which gross receipt revenue over 80%. What does that mean? That means in 2020, let's say you're quarter two and you are 50% lower than quarter two of 2019, you are eligible, right? But your quarter three is going to be eligible anyway if your sales did not go over 80% of recovery compared to 2019, means your, your gross receipt, it is still 20% down. Got it? And in that quarter, you're still eligible. It is when you are going over the 80% in the next quarter, then you won't be eligible. And in 2020, we only had three quarters in general to be eligible for ERC because the pandemic came in like in March, right? So a lot of people are focusing on the quarter two, three, four. So it is very likely you qualify for more quarters than one. And if you qualify for more quarters than one, doesn't mean you're gonna have 5,000, 5,000, 5,000. Remember I said that the year is capped out at a 5,000 maximum credit per employee, right? So that's where that eligibility for 2020. 2021, business operation fully or partially suspended by COVID or 
for quarter one, two, three in 2021, the quarterly gross receipt declined by 20% compared to the same quarter in 2019. An alternative quarter test is right here. So this is related to the third slides right here I was talking about. So if you qualify for one quarter, you qualify for next quarter. And then of course in 2021, there is also for businesses that um, couldn't qualify because they have no 2019 record. So they cannot qualify. So they came up with rules for these people and the beginning business on and after February 15, 2020 has no more than 1 million in average annual sale, gross sale, and is not eligible for credit because the business was not shut down per COVID order and did not have significant reduction and, you know, um, is not, el not el otherwise eligible for. So you don't otherwise, you are not otherwise eligible for credit and because of your, because all of these operations shut down because you are new, right? You are new, you didn't really have that kind of trauma and what you have, it is, your date of operation and less than 1 million, then you will qualify. All right, so much about eligibility because it is just so important, okay? Now, let's look at some examples. Three employees in company ABC, we're talking about 2020, okay? And the employee won 5,000 per quarter, 10,000 per quarter, 15,000 per quarter. This is quarterly. Right, and the gross receipt dropped each quarter. Quarter one, ten percent drop because pandemic didn't even happen yet. Quarter two, fifty-five percent drop. Quarter three, thirty percent drop. Quarter four, eighteen percent drop. You notice that quarter three, it is already above fifty. Remember, that's a fifty drop, right? So quarter four already above fifty. So eligible for ERC for quarter two, three, four, as following. Okay. Assume no PPP fund. Remember we talked about you cannot qualify, you cannot use the qualified wages if that is already paid by other federal programs. It has to be the money that you paid outside of federal programs, right? So quarter two, 5,000 times 50%. Remember 50%, not 70% in 2020. So 5,000 first employee times 50%. Then the second employee times 50% would be 10,000 times 50%. So that's 5,000. And the 15,000 per quarter, that is over the, the 10,000 threshold. So we can only use 10,000. That's why it is a 5,000 again. So you have, you have 12,500 as the credit. So once you file this, you should get this money back to your pocket. The third quarter. The third quarter, remember, we have this uh, 5,000 times 0.5 because on the second quarter, I already have the, uh, the half. Now we got the, the second half, right? So now I got my 5,000 full for that employee. But what about my other two? They already claimed the maximum. So no more. So you only got 2,500. So what about fourth quarter? Because the annual maximum was 5,000 per employee, remember? So you run out of that. So your fourth quarter is zero. And even though, and we qualify to claim all of this because even though, uh, see this quarter three is 30%, but it didn't go, it didn't go under 20%. And the quarter four is under 20%, but it is still that first quarter went under 20%. If there is a quarter five, quarter five is not qualified. But those three quarters are all qualified. It just, we went over the maximum. So that's why the total is only 15,000 refund. Example next for 2021 example, three employees, same thing. Okay, gross receipt drop in each quarter of 2021 compared to the same quarter of 2019, 25% qualified because I only need 20, right? And the 21% qualified again. 
and quarter three didn't qualify, right? Because it is, it is one over is one it is it, it had less loss uh, compared to two thousand nineteen. Because the threshold was twenty percent, remember drop twenty percent drop. So now let's look at this, and you got twenty quarter one, so that five thousand quarter pay for the employee number one times 70 percent remember it's not 50 it's 70 right 70 percent now the seven thousand is coming from the ten thousand because the the quarter wages maximum is ten thousand so now we do 70 percent of course this is seven thousand the the third employee same thing we only use ten thousand now we use seventy percent so it's seven thousand so if you add that together it's seventeen thousand five hundred for the first quarter now look at your second quarter second quarter you qualify again because your drop is more than twenty percent so now I'm qualifying because my drop is more than twenty percent so five thousand times 0. 0.7 again right. And then this 10,000, this second employee, and we'll do 7,000 again. Why is that? Remember the previous one? We actually becoming a zero over here, but why are you able to do 7,000, 7,000 again? Because the maximum is by quarter, is 7,000 per quarter. So we qualified for 17,500 again. Now, the third quarter, the third quarter, you don't qualify because your sales went up to 20. Um, your sales losses is, is less than 20 percent. But remember the rule of alternative quarter. So what did that say? That say the immediate preceding quarter also qualifies. So you go for that. You qualify. So quarter three, you have the 70 percent again, 70 percent again, 75 70% again on the third employee, then you have $17,500 again. Got it? So this is your 2021. All right, couple examples like this will really shake up your thought. So you want to take a picture of this and take a picture of this. So you can use it to guide you, okay? Those examples are really, had a deep thought in there. Otherwise, we don't give you those percentage that way. We don't give you the salary that way. We made it this way so you can see all the fine details in terms of qualification. Why we're talking about this eligibility qualification because you need to calculate your qualified wages, folks. That determines your dollar amount for refund. Cannot afford to do that wrong. All right. Several you must know pointers. And this is something that out of the questions we got from client, the mistakes clients are making, the things we see, and it's just tricky, tricky, very tricky. So you want to know it. And even if you don't know how to do it, you have community CPA. You can always come to us before this thing expires and we can always help you. All right, but you want to know these pointers. Number one, when calculating for credit, keep this in mind. Double dipping funds, not allowed. Double dipping just means that if it is already paid by federal grants, you cannot use it. You cannot use that wages again. So let's say our employee number one was actually paid by PPP amount. Then you cannot use that employee number one anymore because they got paid by PPP, all right? And the non-refundable portion, this is tricky, but it doesn't affect your credit amount. It just affects your 10, 941X, 941 amendment. Because quarter three and a four, the non-refundable portion is different from quarter one and two in 2021. You know, tell me about why they have to make it so complex. I have no idea. Um, it just really, it feels like they are so worried about accountant doesn't have any job anymore. So the government is doing everything they can to make the CPA firms, the lawyers, the accountants just so busy. So they all quit from doing their jobs. 
right? And I, I really just think that's what they're doing. So it's nothing, uh, tell me why, I don't know why, but that's just what they're doing. They're changing it. So non-refundable portion got changed. And for the third quarter, fourth quarter, so be careful. And when you do 941X and you will catch it, you will know what I'm talking about. Filing procedures, know your filing procedures, will come to that. So those are the things you need to know. Double dipping, we already talked about. Pay, paycheck protection, PPP, RAF, shattered venue operator grants, folks, and other federal grants. You know, I can name all of it, but I want to tell you that anything, just remember, anything federal government giving you for free, and you should not be count in the qualified wages. Now, this is the one that I need, we, we had a quite, a, quite a few uh, conversation related to that for our client and, uh, you know, the wages exclusion. So there are certain people's salary cannot be used to calculate credit. So going back to that example, I have, for example, em employee number one, two, three. So if one of those employee is the constructive owner, constructive ownership belongs to the calculation of ERC exclusion, that cannot be counted for the credit. So let me just read that to you, okay? Expanded concept of ownership. Constructive ownership is expanded concept of ownership. Husband and a wife each own 50%. And constructive ownership means that Husband owns 100% and the wife owns 100%. Each family member owns all shares belongs to the family. So what that means is constructive ownership don't care you are real owner or not. So let's say, you know, let's say I am uh, the owner and uh, my spouse uh, working and uh, so has a salary and he doesn't own the company, it's just me owning it. Constructive ownership means that he owns it too. So he is considered to be a owner under constructive ownership concept. So therefore, and his salary cannot be calculated into ERC credit. Got it? If majority owner has a living family member, Owner's wages is not qualified. Family member of a majority owner wages excluded. So what does that mean? These are really quote unquote, we, we took it out of the, the clause, but what it means is, let's say if you are the business owner and you are the center of the business. So up above you is your parents-in-law and your parents. Underneath is your, is your wife and your um, brother-in-law, sister-in-law. Aside of you is your brother sisters, okay? And what the exclusion trying to say is that as long as ERC credit calculation concern, you cannot include these people around you, their wages, because they are all leaving family members. Okay, so I know this thing will leave you with a lot of questions because we are small businesses. Which business do not use family members? They probably do. Okay, and if you use family member and that salary would not be included in the calculation. So this is where you want to be really aware. This is a pointer we want to bring to the forefront for you. So when you do the calculation, you do it right. Next, non-refundable. Remember we talked about non-refundable. Non-refundable credit means in general, when you talk about non-refundable credit, it means that if you paid taxes already, then you have this non-refundable, then it just use that to reverse the taxes you already paid. So, you know, the same concept almost to the child tax credit, if you remember so many years ago, 
child tax credit is a credit that is called non-refundable. Means that if you didn't pay federal income tax, you're not gonna get the child tax credit. Then over the years, the past 10 years, I really think, it got evolved into refundable. Means that even if you don't pay any taxes to the government, you still get the money. So now the ERC credit has a portion that saying, if you didn't pay it, you don't get it. But if you paid it, you get that portion back. But the majority of a ERC credit is a refundable credit, which means what? Which means that you get it back regardless. You get that credit, you get that additional money regardless, you paid it or not. So here, the non-refundable ERC credit for 2020 quarters, for 2020 quarters, and also the first two quarters of 2021 is that 6.2% of the employer portion of social security. But for the third quarter, fourth quarter, it become Medicare portion of 1.45, for the non-refundable. And it doesn't impact you folks because you already paid it. If you have payroll, you already did. And so you will get it back. It doesn't impact your number of refund. But what we are saying to you is when you file your 941X, that is different. That is different, okay? Now let's look at this. Non-refundable ERC credit doesn't affect your total ERC but appears on 941 and 941X. Quarter one through quarter four of 2020 and quarter one to quarter two of 2021 is impact this employer portion of social security for 6.2%. And of course, 2021 last two quarters, it is just 1.45 and only recovery startup business may claim ERC in this quarter, in the quarter three and a four, all right? In quarter three and a four, quarter three also available to, um, to because it ends on September. So the quarter three is also available to the other businesses, not just the recovery startup, startup business, okay? All right, filing procedures. Form 941X for eligible quarter, okay? So your filing procedure is your, your form that you need to use is 941X. See the timeline folks, five years to file instead of the standard three years. So this is for ERC. For ERC, you have five years to file folks. And what does that mean? That just means everyone will get there. Everyone will get there. Okay, and you want to make sure that you get everything understood and take your time and get it filed. And the form 941X need to be signed and mailed to IRS and please use trackable mails, right? See, it is not electronic filing, it is actually paper filing. And it could take up to nine months to a year, folks. It takes time to get your check. Okay, so we want you to know that filing procedure. And one other thing I want to bring out to you, I know when I talk about this to our client, it's like a bombshell. It's like, no way, are you serious? No way, yes way, and you have to do it, okay? So if you claimed 2020 ERC credit, if you claimed it and you received it, you need to amend your 2020 tax return. So if 2020 ERC claimed after filing your 2020 tax return, majority of our clients we see are filing 2020 now instead of last year. So, you know, we had five years to do. So that means your 2020 tax return need to be changed because those ERC credit is actually additional income for you. You need to pay taxes on those amount. So you do have to pay, you do have to file amendment. So having said that, we are in 2022. Am I right, folks? We're filing 2021 tax return. If you are claiming ERC, are you going to rush for 2021 tax return, folks? Tell me you are not. You are not going to rush 
your 2021 tax return because you want your 2021 ERC credit to be filed and claimed. And then you file your 2021 tax return properly with the right amount. Okay, so really, and this impacts your income tax. That's what I want to finally tell you. If you got $50,000 on ERC credit, because you have 10 employees and 5,000 each, you got 50,000 in 2020. Then your 2020 tax return already filed by community CPA, you need to come back. You need to come back, amend your 2020 tax return. All right. I know it is like not good, but that's what happens, right? Couple frequently asked questions I want to cover. And one of them is, um, it's a question that over what period can a business claim ERC? So this goes back to our very first slides. Remember the ERC claims start on the date, that's March 15 of 2020, all the way to sub September 30th, 2021. Remember, that's the period you can claim. But for the startup after February the 15th of 2020, the newly startup, the one that's so brave, open up their business during the pandemic time. And like, you know, I think those delivery companies, you know, maybe they, you know, maybe they started in 2020. Those are the ones have the claim can be done for the third and the fourth quarter of 2021 fourth quarter. Otherwise, nor the businesses that comparing to 2019 already, you cannot do fourth quarter, okay? So that's the period. That's the timeline. But of course, there is a revenue declining requirement, right? So we knew it is 50% in 2020, 20% in 2021. And for the recovery, for the recovery startup business, those are under 1 million, remember? So those are the things that you need to know and related to claim. So our second question, um, frequently asked questions, you know, is to say that, can I just forego of my ERC credit? Absolutely, absolutely. You can forego your election and, you know, um, any eligible employer may elect not to apply for ERC for any calendar quarter by not claiming the credit on employer employment tax return, that's a 941, okay? So if the uh, eligible employer elect not to claim the ERC in one calendar quarter, the eligible employer is not prohibited from claiming the credit in a subsequent calendar quarter for qualified wages in that subsequent quarter provided it meet the requirement to claim the credit. So you, I guess you can, uh, in 2020, if you say you don't want to claim, that's annual. But in 2020, uh, you know, that's a $5,000 maximum per employee annual ones. So you, if you decided not to claim, that's fine. But for, you know, what it says here is that you can determine that by quarter. You can decide on this quarter, I don't. Next, even though I qualify, I don't. But next quarter, I qualify, I can claim. And this, or the next quarter is a subsequent quarter qualifies, I can claim. So it's really, uh, it says that the decision is made quarter by quarter. And of course you don't have to claim. It's a credit that available to you, you don't have to take it. So how can you work with community CPA for your ERC needs? So we have a three steps in our process. So anyone who come in to work on ERC claim, we do eligibility calculation and the examination. And this is where, you know, we actually just recently had a, had a employer come in and, you know, based on all these regulations, we actually think that they, you know, they couldn't really claim based on, based on the constructive ownership definition. So that's kind of like a bad news. And then, you know, 
sure, you can go some other places. They don't even talk to you about anything like that and claim everything for you. And then that's just gonna trigger, that's just gonna trigger you to have issues in the future. If ERC can be claimed, oh my goodness. Um, if ERC can be claimed for five years long, and you think the government don't have chance to come back to you to look at how things were doing in the next five years, of course they can. In fact, they don't even have to put a statutory limitation on that. They can always come back to look at it eventually. Eventually they will get around for everybody, right? Pandemic not gonna last forever. If we don't get that done this year, we get that done next year. So again, you want, you want the professionals to get your eligibility signed off, to be correct. And then credit calculation, that's more mathematical. If you have, you know, we have clients with thousands of employees, then of course the, the credit calculation becomes a massive spreadsheet play. But, you know, calculation itself is not difficult, it's math then you need to amend your 941, okay? And of course, if you haven't really filed your 941 yet, then you will do it right, you don't have to amend it. But if you already did, you will amend it. Now, when can you expect the refund of the credit? We talked about this. So right now, what we heard from IRS is a longer time than what originally anticipated for 120 days. Okay, so now the, um, you know, if you go on internet to search, the answers range from, you know, 90, nine, nine months all the way to three years. But uh, for what we see among our client, it is between the nine month and the two a year. So that's what we're seeing right now. So getting prepared, you are not going to get that uh, like as quick as what originally was said on the care cares act but it is going to it is going to come back to you so when you are thinking about your refund really consider tax filing folks don't just think of um, the refund and not plan how you file your taxes so this actually concludes all of the content I want to cover related to ERC. And I want to share with you a example of a 940 original filing and, and another one is 940 amended. And this is the most uh, seen um, amendment is a quarter one, 2021. It is really the most used amendment right now by business people. So let's look at the original. I have them right here. So this is a 941, 2021 first quarter, you see, okay? So this is the original filing. Of course, nothing really strange. And then you see this social security wages and that has a column two right here. This is both employee and the employer portion of social security. Remember the non-refundable portion doesn't impact your total amount, but I was saying that it's just, um, just your 941 uh, X is different. So the 941 X will reflect half of that amount. So this is what you have on the original. So everything is just look normal. And I know you are familiar with that because it doesn't matter where you get your payroll done, you get the copy of your 941. So it just looked like this. Now with the amendment, so now you got your eligibility already studied, you know you're eligible, you can apply. So you come over here and you will select 941, and you select the quarter and this is 941X. So, you know, with ERC, this is what the checkbox you use. You use the part one, number two, it's a claim. You use part two, three, and the part two, four, C. So, you know, just, you, you know, you, if you take picture of our webinars or just kind of go through our webinars a couple of times, I had one, um, one subscriber was telling me that one of my webinars related to mark to market and she actually gone through them 
six, seven times. So I was saying, I was asking, is that because the webinar itself is not uh, to the point or it is too packed with the knowledge? So it's just almost like you get one sentence, then the next one kind of, you know, just went out of your mind and you couldn't really capture. So she was saying that she just needed to listen through my Chinglish because the English I speak it is clear, but she wants to understand every word I said. So she gone through six, seven times to understand mark to market. And in the end, she still brought in a question, which I think is not so much of a mark to market credit issue. It is more about understanding of the brokerage statement. So I actually, at one of those times, I will actually do a webinar about brokerage statement to explain to you about wash sale losses versus the mark to market election, how that really the same. They really don't have a lot of difference if we ignore time. Okay. But just kind of giving you back to here. And if you really don't understand my English and take a picture of this, because that's all you need to do. That's all you need to choose. Okay. Now I want to bring to your attention of this one. This is your 18A on page number two. See, this is page number two, 18A. This is half of my social security column two on the original return. This is half of that amount. What that does is it just defining what is non-reportable, non-refundable portion, okay? So defining that. Then you come over to this page three, folks. Do not imagine these number were adding them together. No, the form doesn't do that for you. The number, one number you need to put in is the total eligible credit. You calculated that on the calculation. Remember I said part of it is just the math. And then the second part of calculation of the credit, you got the total here. So you put the total here. And you also know the non-refundable portion, then you ultimately knows the refundable portion. You just use this number 27915 minus 3813 and come up with 24102. They're not calculating on the form, so you just need to fill it in yourself, okay? After you did that, after you did that, and you want to give them, you want to give them the qualified wages, this is qualified wages for ERC. So you got that from the spreadsheet as well because that's how you calculated the credit from, okay? Now you go straight down and coming over here. So this is a section where you must give a detailed explanation of how you determine your correction. And you saw me using this administrative error, okay? It make no sense to you. And you don't need to make any sense of that because that is what instruction says on 941X. Don't be creative, just follow instruction. So all you need to say is employer claim the employee retention credit and administrative error. Ah, don't have too big of an ego folks. Who makes mistake? <laughs> I never make mistake, are you kidding me? And I know that's what a lot of business owners felt that way. We never make mistakes. But it is not really the ego issue. It is just what required on the 940 instruction, 941X instruction. So make sure and you follow what we showed you here. And then you got your amendment through. And remember, you cannot file it any other way. You only can what? You, you only can mail it in. So track your mailing and don't lose it. All right. And that is it for today. I do want to leave with you our contact information. So at our firm, um, you know, Steve, Dr. Howe is actually in charge of ERC credit eligibility study. And um, uh, with that, when you, uh, if you're considering to hire our firm to work on your ERC credit claim, and his email is steve at communitycpa.com. And he also 
Um, you can also call our phone number to get a hold of him. That is 515-288-3188. So I hope this is enough of information for you today. And I hope you have a great weekend. The weather can get warmer in Midwest, and I'm so looking forward to that. And uh, I hope you all have a really good tax season. This year, when you file your business tax return, consider ERC impact. All right, talk to you again. Bye-bye.